our work on the multifunctional um, hydrogels for energy and environmental um, application. I'm a, a professor of material science engineering and mechanical engineering at UT Austin and affiliated with both Texas Material Institute and the UT Energy Institute. All right, before I start with the technical contents, uh, please allow me to share the, this first and most important slide acknowledgement. So over the past years at UT Austin, I have been very fortunate to have worked with um, many outstanding graduates and undergraduate students, postdoc and visiting students. So it's actually them who make the exciting research possible. And I'm also very grateful to have many great collaborators, both at UT Austin and other university and the national labs for their strong support, especially Dr. Goodenough and Dr. Mentheran. So both of them are my colleagues and the faculty mentors and also my um, collaborators. And also last but not least, to the funding support um, to my research program, especially to um, on the energy storage part, supported by Department of Energy, DAPA, Lucky Martin, and the National Science Foundation. So hydrogel are usually um, jelly-like solids with a very elastic nature that are commonly recognized in our daily life. So such as the baby diapers, the contact lenses, and the drug delivery and other biomedical uh, applications. And if we look at the hydrogel more from a, a molecular level, so they are highly cross-linked network capable of retaining large amounts of water and maintaining these 3D hierarchical micro and nano structures. So there are many tuning knots that you can actually control the structure and the chemistry of the, uh, the hydrogel. For example, you can have change the different cross-linking mechanism through either uh, chemical bonding or physical bonding. And then this building block involved can be polymers, carbon materials, or even inorganic compounds. So it's actually a very accommodating class of materials with various different um, uh, components or um, chemistries that you can actually indulge different properties into materials. So since I started at UT Austin about over a little over eight years ago, so we have developed a novel class of synthetically tunable uh, nanostructured conducting polymer hydrogel. So they are hierarchically porous, structurally tunable in size, morphology, and porosity. So for example, as I mentioned, tunable um, elements for the gelation chemistry include a different basic building blocks, uh, different uh, cross-linking mechanisms, and even the, with these various addictive materials that can be incorporated into gel materials to bring uh, different functions into these gel materials. And this powerful gelation chemistry, so in those hydrogel with very tunable physical and chemical properties, including ionic and electronic conductivities, mechanical strengths, and a controllable swelling behavior. And these property can be encoded into hydrogel materials for like, um, exciting application beyond the traditional the biological related applications to the energy storage, energy conversion, and also sustainable clean water productions. So in addition to their tunable synthetic elements and the micro or nano structures of hydrogel can be explored as precursors or templates for architecting the three-dimensional frameworks of electrochemically active materials. And these unique interconnected power structure of hydrogel and hydrogel derived materials. So they can actually be offering fast charge and mass transport while offering um, the large surface area. And, uh, and uh, more importantly, so the delicate polymer water interaction can also be regulated to achieve desirable water retention, absorption, and even evaporation within these hydrogel materials. So by understanding, better understanding such as the structural derived property, so we have um, been able to enable this class of materials to um, become useful for several important energy and water related sustainable uh, technology, including energy storage and conversion, soil water purification and desalination, and be becoming uh, very responsive, adaptive materials for various energy and electronic related applications. So next, I will, giving, um, I will be giving several uh, synthetic examples to showcase how we can uh, controllably synthesize uh, this class of materials. So the first example is um, these 3D hierarchically porous nanostructured conducting polymer hydrogel based on the polyaniline. So this is actually the precursor that we use. So we start to use 
this fatty acid is naturally occurring molecular, which has the six phosphoric acid groups. So acting as both dopant and, and cross-linker. And the scheme in this top left showing there are three level of pores in this type of gels from the micron size pores to the 100 nanometer core gap size between these interconnected nanofibers and even down to this molecular level. So this is called mesh size. It represents the intermolecular chain distance. And then to your right, so these are electron microscopy images on these gels showing highly interconnected network of dendritic nanofibers with a relative uniform diameter, about tens of a nanometer. And this TAM image even showing that these two level of pores that like I mentioned here, that actually in both micron and 100 nanometer size that can be uh, observed. And these actually is very tunable materials. Their surface, um, surface area can be actually changed in tune, tuning from uh, tens to hundreds of uh, square meter per gram. And also these gels have also very high electronic conductivity. The range can be tuned from a few to even um, uh, tens of thousands of Siemens per, per meter. So this is actually bound by, uh, done by this one step with these novel uh, cross-linker rows. So let me start uh, with another example. So this second example is through um, supermolecular self-assembly mechanism. So in this case, we rationally select the CUPCTS. So this is a copper cyanate which has a four sulfonic acid functional group. So it can serve as both doping and cross-linker. But during the polymerization, so this special cross-linker, they can align the polymer chains and self-assemble into this polypyrrole uh, starting from the monomer to these 1D nanostructures. And it should be noted that polyaniline that I show you um, in the last slide oftentimes can favor growth into the fiber-like structures in, a, uh, in, in many uh, literature. But however, uh, the polypyrrole typically tends to go into this nanoparticle due to their preferred formation of the branch and the cross-linked chains. And uh, typically to form the 1D nanostructures, the only way shown in literature was to use the templated, um, template guided electropolymerization. So this is actually is the first time for pyrrole molecular to be able, able to self-assemble to the 1D nanostructure without assistance of any templates. So this actually SEM image is showing a different nanostructure uh, polypyrrole based hydrogel when adopting different dopants. So we select the COPCTS, which has the four functional group. And then these are the two functional group called indigo kami. So you can think about it's half of size of the COPCTS. And this isotene is quarter size of the COPCTS. So this is actually has the most effective chain polymerization effective regulation. So they can guide it forming these interconnected 1D nano uh, uh, structures. And if with, with the least effective during the polymerization for this self-sorting effect. So they were still forming these very typical nanoparticle assembled structures. And you can see in between with very similar uh, conditions, only changing in this different cross-linker or as the dopant. So this indigo kami really giving you this intermediate step. So these are the nanoparticle self-assembled necklace like structures. So this is actually a one case showing a super molecular self-assembly can provide um, these uh, very effective approach to allow the design of the functional nanomaterials through these non-covalent um, inter interaction. And these inter um, disc-shaped structure actually can give these 1D structures very effectively. And then moreover, given these nanostructure confinement effect, these different structures of polypyrrole from different cross-linker, they actually show very different uh, physical property. For example, electronic properties. So you can see the, um, the CUPCTS guided uh, assembled polypyrrole, they have the highest electronic conductivity, which is about two orders higher than these pristine or isotene um, self-assembled polypyrrole um, particles. So these are like a, a several orders difference in, uh, um, in uh, electronic conductivity. So the last example I would like to show is changing from the one step, uh, one part thesis to take advantage of this, it's called uh, interfacial thesis. So this is actually, you use the mixed solvent effect for things is of a hollow uh, sphere structured particles. So this actually is a very tunable process because you can change the solvent with different surface energy and you can tailor the micro droplet size. Therefore, you can change the final structure of the form, the gels. And you can see here, so this is actually is one part of the water and uh, IPA and the different precursor molecules have different uh, solubility in a different uh, solvents. So you can change this different uh, mixed solvent and you can actually change the different size of this hollow sphere structure. 
So this is actually both electron uh, SEM and the TM images showing these interconnected hollow sphere structures that can significantly change their mechanical properties. So from typically um, conducting polymer or conjugate polymer based materials, they are relatively rigid, feels like a powder. But if you have these very effective hollow st structures, they become sponge-like flexible behavior. So it can be used as very flexible supercapacitors or ultra uh, sensitive sensors. Right. So with these um, several examples showing controllable photosynthesis, so let me uh, give several examples how these uh, tunable hydrogel materials can be useful for uh, both energy and water related applications. So <clears throat> due to the electrochemical activity of the molecular backbones, as well as the, uh, their micro nanostructures, so um, with the tunable cross-linker uh, network, so these hydrogel can serve as a uh, multifunctional uh, materials for different energy related application. For example, serving as flexible supercapacitors. They can also be used as a novel components, for example, as binders for high energy batteries. And they can also use as templates to form solid state, very high uh, performance, solid state electrolyte for solid state batteries. And then they, due to their tunable um, cross linker, so they can also serve as efficient electrocatalysis for uh, uh, reactions to produce the uh, variable chemicals such as the OR, OER, or uh, NR for the uh, nitrogen uh, reduction reactions. So given the time limit, I'm going to uh, pick this high energy battery as an example. So as we know, electrical energy storage is essential to um, realize our society's uh, future energy economy to achieve uh, a sustainable energy supply for all the people. So upper right figure shows there are a number of energy storage technology potentially useful for high value application. So ranging from electrified uh, transportation for EVs to integration of renewable energy source to power the quality and then reliability to, um, to complement the solar and the wind powers. And the lithium ion battery you can see is the prime champion here nowadays, given their electrochemical characteristics, both offering both the high power and energy densities. And the commercial lithium ion battery are currently based on the lithium intercalation compounds. So they use these intercalation materials. So as shown in the bottom right scheme, so lithium ion shuttles between the two hosts, which serve as both positive and negative electrodes or called uh, anode and cathodes during battery uh, charging and discharging process. And the energy density are related with uh, their capacity and then um, their, their voltage. So if to, in order to achieve higher energy density, so we need to have a higher capacity materials or higher voltage battery electrodes. And to evaluate energy storage technology, so typically the most famous uh, evaluation mechanism is this, uh, uh, showing in this slide, it's called Ragonian plot. So this actually compares both power density versus the energy density. So if we take uh, EV as example, so the energy density means that per, um, per uh, charge, how far or how long distance your electrical car can uh, uh, can drive, and the power density relevant to how fast your car can accelerate, giving out uh, the energy. And then in addition, there are other important parameters such as cycle life and how long your battery can last, and as well as how safe and how cost effective your battery system is. So to enable electrical vehicle to be widely ad adoptable and to enable the great scale in integration of renewable energy source, we really need to have better performing battery, battery system with higher energy and a better safety. And also with a, higher, uh, with a longer cycle life and, and to be, becomes more um, cost effective. So if we look into the traditionally how the electro can be made in a, li a lithium ion battery, so they are the three uh, key components. So showing in here, so they are these electro particles and you have the conductive, conductive addictives and then you have these non-conductive binder polymers. So these conductive addictive typically have no mechanical binding force. So you need to have the both conductive binder, uh, conductive addiv addictive and these non-conductive binders. So they tend to aggregate during the volume expansion. And then this actually will lead to the destruction of electrical uh, connections. And if you look at this bottom um, schemes, so to reach out the entire volume of the battery electro materials and to maximize the energy um, use, so the internal pathway for both electron and ions need to be um, optimized and then to have the like, continuous connecting all the region of the electrodes to your electrolyte. So in, in ideal cases, every electrical particle need to be kind of structured, shape, and wired to a current collector to, um, to be useful. 
So, so that's the reason why the design and the thesis of the binder and the conductive um, systems with the controlled or optimized uh, architecture is of uh, particularly um, uh, particular importance to improve the energy use of the whole battery systems. And if you look at the, um, the, um, the hydrogel that I show you, they really have this characteristic that is useful for making these next generation lithium-ion battery to be able to have the high electrical surfaces, high electrical conductivities, and also given this hierarchical structure to allow the ion accessibility and also to have this very stable electrochemical uh, capability. So let me uh, show you several examples how the, um, these nanostructures that conduct polymer hydrogel can be useful as a framework electrodes. So remember, I showed you in a, a previous slide uh, that um, these conducting polymer hydrogels, abbreviated as uh, NCPH, so they actually have these multiple level of porosities. And given their uh, electronic conductivity, and also they can form in these macroscopic gels, so they can serve as these bifunctional binders, not only giving conductivity, but also they can link gelated these particle into this we call uh, apple uh, tree design. So this instead of you have a conventional uh, slurry consisting with this um, aggregation of a nanoparticle with this carbon particles and then um, uh, with this uh, cell um, kind of phase segregation, often you can see. So these integrated monolithic um, electro framework can actually offer much better electrochemical activity and stability. So we actually shows in this slide is we use this anode based on the conversion electrodes. So these are um, based on a magnetite. It's very abundant in, in nature. So you can see the, uh, the framework can serve as the um, very uniform and also very powerful uh, matrix to host these um, particles. And then these alerts this level a two level interconnectivity, not only the macroscopic inter interconnectivity, and these gel can form a very uniform uh, layer of coatings onto your uh, particles so to avoid these particles to um, aggregate together. So this is very imp important to minimize this is very sluggish electrochemical kinetics for the uh, uh, magnetite uh, ion 304 type of uh, electrodes. And you can see the comparison is very clear. So the control sample is by conventionally made with a slurry process. So under the high rate, so the 1C mean, meaning that one hour charging discharging, so you barely have any uh, uh, deliverable capacity. But with our gel matrix, so you can see with these tunable uh, CUPCDS dope or these fatty uh, acid dope PPY, so you can have different uh, conductivity for your framework. So they can offer different rate performance. So at a different um, rate, charging this charging current density, so you can have different um, uh, property, but it's certainly much better than uh, the conventional uh, slurry based materials. And then not only to, uh, to the magnetite materials, we also tested these materials to other type of um, ultra high capacity electrode, including, for example, silicon case. So silicon offer even higher capacity than uh, magnetite materials. And this is actually it's a three level of comparison. So if you have a gel forming these two level of connectivity, so they are very stable. And if you simply physically mix hydrogel with silicon, so initially they work better than your um, uh, conventional slurry made electrodes, but they will also quickly lose the capacity. So with these two level of connectivity, it offers the best stable um, electrodes. And then not only silicon as the anode can work, so these framework can also extend it to other cathode materials, such as these high capacity sulfur. And then with this um, coating on the surface, so you can see they also becomes more stable. And then with the higher conductivity uh, gels, you can also have a higher uh, capacities. So not only they can serve as a novel binder materials, they can also use for the solid state batteries. So conventionally, the solid state battery is actually based on these core uh, inorganic ceramic, core inorganic solid electrolyte, ISE. But due to their kind of um, uh, very challenging uh, handle um, um, property of the, the mechanical due to the rigid mechanical property, so they cannot be used for like a larger scale of handling. And then typically they also have uh, the high um, interfacial resistance at the interface. So to very hard to achieve high um, rate performance. So the conducted, uh, the composite polymer electrolyte will be a CPE. So they can bring in both good properties of the uh, ISE in organic filler and also as well as with the polymer. So it becomes much better in terms of mechanical property and also a better interface to minimize this interfacial um, uh, resistance. And typically the challenge is when you bring these two together, 
So as you bring in more and more of in inorganic filler to have a higher ionic conductivity, so oftentimes they will plateau in terms of ionic conductivity is due to this ag significant aggregation of the inorganic filler. So they actually will lose ionic con conduct conductivity when you even bring in more. So we come up with these uh, intrinsic structural uh, advantage of these percolated gel materials. So we call it inverse design. So instead of you simply mix the particle, this inorganic filler with the polymer matrix. So we use this gelation chemistry as guidance to form in this pre-percolated uh, uh, network. So, and then you can remove the gel polymer and then form in this interconnected inorganic ceramic pathways. And then you fill in with the ionic polymer such as PEO. In these cases, you can actually have, you can avoid this significant aggregation. And what actually is showing here is you can see the LLTO framework is actually using this gel framework versus the standard weight of making the nanoparticle and then with the silica or pure PEO as baseline. You can see with the gel percolated network, the encoded from the structural advantage of gel. So you can have a much higher volume uh, fraction to be coded and with a much higher ionic conductivity at the room temperature to be useful for the device. And the last quick example is this gelation chemistry for the controllable soil gel transition can also be used as this smart electrolyte. So this is actually take advantage of a thermal responsive property of smart electrolyte for energy storage to regulate the gelation and this solution state to the gelation state. So at a higher temperature, your battery can actually shut down actively. And once the temperature go down to the safe region, they can actually reverse back to actually to become sort of functional again. So this is very different from the conventional, you actually shut down, but it's actually, it's going to, uh, will not be able to reverse back to the working state. And this actually is take advantage of this tri block polymer using the PEO, PPO, PEO, tri block polymer. And you can change this sodio transition temperature to show their kind of tunable properties. So for example, in these cases, you can see at a higher temperature, if this is at room temperature, so you can actually have the supercapacitor behaviors but when you have a higher temperature, the, uh, the electrochemical um, activity will be shut down. And once you go in back to the room temperature, that will be back to, um, uh, to working state. And this is actually is very uh, versatile because it actually can be useful for various electro materials and a, uh, with the various kind of ions to be able to um, applicable. All right, so uh, the last, I will use the last quickly, last a few minutes to, um, to showcase some of uh, applications in um, water related uh, application. So we have exploring these multifunctional gels to be used for um, solar desalination and atmosphere water harvesting uh, applications. So given a time limit, I'm only just going to focus on the solar water desalination part. So as we all know, water covers over 70% of our earth. A very limited amount actually can uh, is the fresh water we can use directly. And then currently, a UN um, report shows that over um, half, about uh, 3.5 or over 3 million, uh, 3 billion people experience this water shortage. So our various water purification technology uh, exists, such as thermal desalination or reverse osmosis, but they typically depend on natural water resources. So they are only uh, feasible in the coastal areas. So they are more suitable for large scale centralized production of the water and then typically involve high capital costs and a significant infrastructure and energy requirement. So for example, a typical seawater uh, RO plant will require about up to three kilowatt hour of electricity to produce about one cubic meter of water. And some of this, um, some of this distillation plant even use more than 10 times of the energy compared to, um, can, compared to RO mem membrane. So this actually is, we involve significant CO, uh, CO2 emissions. So how to effectively utilize renewable energy for producing the clean water is another uh, grand challenges. So the solar vapor generation, also, also known as the solar dis distillation, is a promising technology to pr produce clean water from the seawater and then through the solar power evaporation process. However, the critical challenge of the solar vapor generation is the, uh, the uh, diffusive solar energy cannot meet the high energy demand needed for efficient evaporation of water. So they often require the solar concentrator to have um, the high evaporation rate and the collection rates of the water. So there are three main factors to decrease energy loss and achieve high efficiency to solar steam, uh, solar vapor generation. So first you need to have a high uh, evaporation area 
to have the high solar absorption and also the heat localization need to be happening at a water air interface. So you don't want to lose the energy to the bulk water. So, and then last is you wanted to have the water transport very efficiently. So once the water evaporates to the surface, on the surface, so the water can be pumped in to the surface to keep continuing uh, evaporate. So um, our hydrogel actually is very uh, unique materials. So they actually can offer all the benefits, including confined evaporations and then branch the diffusion and then an aerial pumping of the, from these water, um, um, the hydrogel uh, network due to their microstructures. And this is our first design that take advantage of the hybrid hydrogel. One component is called uh, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. This is a sub uh, hydrophilic materials. And then the other is polypyrrole. It's, these are the solar absorptive materials. But what we found is very unique. Polymer gel network can reduce the latent heat, the latent uh, uh, evaporation enthalpy of the water due to these water hydrophilic um, and the polymer chain interactions. So this is actually is due to this very unique hydrogel water in interaction. So in the literature is known as the three different states of water. One is called it free water. The second is intermediate water. And as we know, if you have hydrophilic backbones, there's a very strong layer of water bound to, uh, due to the hydrogen bonding. So this intermediate water is actually very unique. So they are least kind of coordinated and they actually need needed less energy to evaporate. So to enable much faster evaporation rate. So this is actually the first finding in the literature. You can change in the water uh, uh, evaporation behavior. And what we're seeing is um, given this hydrogel, they actually also have, not only they are very effective in, um, in evaporation. So um, before our work, so the, all the, um, the prior record is centered around about 1.5 and 1.6, given their, um, their evaporation rate. And then once our hydrogel is um, demonstrated, so we actually can achieve almost double of the, the literature record. And then also the hydrogel is actually can have the uh, anti um, fouling property. So they can be stably uh, working over the kind of, um, a month level. And you can see effective solar evaporation. So once they evaporated after desalination, so they, their um, uh, the salinity actually can be reduced by uh, uh, several orders of the magnitude to be um, able to uh, become uh, drinkable. And we also demonstrated um, in our uh, um, on top of our um, um, engineering teaching center. So we demonstrated this small prototype, and then for the continuous uh, daily uh, productions, and this actually can uh, have potential daily yield about twenty uh, tw over twenty liter per square meter of these active materials. So it's efficient for a, a household of four people. And this work later highlighted by, uh, by science. And then very recently, um, in the recent two years, we have expanded this direction through the more sy uh, systematic studies. We show the hydrogel actually can uh, have the energy nano confinement effect. And then you can change the different hydrotability of polymer network. And then you can actually tunable, um, you can tune tuning the surface topology or surface availability to improve the uh, evaporation behavior even beyond 3.2. So to reach about four, um, kilogram of water per, um, per hour. And then later, what we hope is we can actually use hydrogel as cost-effective materials to really demonstrate for the household needs for, um, uh, for the solar, um, uh, effective solar water evaporation. So given the uh, time limit, so let me stop here and then thank you all for uh, attention. Thank you.